What impact has the coronavirus pandemic had on your service, given particularly that microthrombi are an important element of the pathology of, of COVID-19? I, I think there was about three or four different areas that it affected. But um, if I just think about how it affected my service, well, oddly, we, we, we at first saw a bit of a drop in the numbers of VT referrals, pr primarily, I think, because um, at the time when we went into lockdown, there may have been concern about uh, attending hospitals and such. Um, but that's since recovered. And obviously, we, we've had to make major changes to how we run the service in terms of the fact that we have to uh, now restrict the number of face-to-face -face reviews so that the bulk of our clinic has moved to a virtual service uh, and when we are seeing patients face to face obviously we have to uh, undertake all necessary precautions such as PP and social distancing. Um, however my role also was involved with with the the wider role of anticoagulation in COVID-19 primarily around um, early on in the pandemic there was a lot of well, well there was minor evidence coming out of China showing potential benefits of heparin in the, the management of COVID-19 especially from a mortality perspective which was potentially thought to be due to the anti-inflammatory nature of heparins um, and, and so we, I, I led a group in the health board in terms of developing local thromboprophylactic policies and uh, over the past 18 months I, I, I think we, we, we've changed the guideline as the evidence has emerged uh, especially quite recently where the collaborative trial arms have now published their data on the large studies they were undertaking whereby what we're actually seeing is that if we use therapeutic doses of low molecular heparin in what we classify as moderately unwell COVID-19 patients so these are the patients who were admitted requiring supplemental oxygen but not require intensive oxygen therapy or uh, organ support. If we use therapeutic doses, that, that, that does seem to be a trend towards reduction in mortality or escalation uh, to require an organ support. So we've been able to shape our guidelines with that. And, and this is what's now in line with NICE. Conversely, in the critical care arm, uh, it seemed to be that there was no benefit in terms of using therapeutic anticoagulant therapy. And in fact, there was an increased bleeding risk. So it gives rise to this potential theory that by using early therapeutic doses of anticoagulant therapy, we may be preventing the progression of patients into things like TIC. But we're still not sure of that in terms of the mechanism, and it's quite theoretical at the moment. Now I'd like to step back a bit and look at wider issues. Is there a quantifiable benefit to your service? Or, or looking at it another way, why should a hospital invest in a pharmacy-led VTE management service? I, I think it's a good question. I, I mean, we've currently been undertaking a lot of service evaluation and um, some of it's still in progress, but we're expected to see around about 450 to 500 new VTE patients this year, which is a huge group growth from the fact that we were only seeing about 150 patients three years ago. Um, and some of the things we focused on in terms of benefits are around the turnaround times for patients. So the, in the all-party parliamentary thrombosis group report in 2018, they quoted the average figure from a patient being diagnosed with a VT to the treatment being initiated and the patient discharged was 16 hours. So within our service, we've measured this and we're actually 105 minutes. So we're, we're, we're far below the, um, the, the, the national average in terms of turnaround of patients. In fact, we measured that in patients who could have the same day scans, there's 137 minutes between the patient attending, having a scan, being seen by us and initiated on a treatment and sent home with that treatment in their hand. So again, we've got quite a rapid turnaround service. Obviously, that this depends on our access to radiology, but when it's performing like that, it performs extremely efficiently. And, and so... This is our major benefit is in terms of the fact that we can offer an efficient service that allows patients to be managed quickly but safely and then the knowledge that they're also then part of a service where they'll have follow up and all of those treatment decisions will be undertaken under that one umbrella. This has been a pretty dynamic story so far. Um, what are the next steps? Have you got plans for further development? 
yes, we have at the moment. We are uh, we've submitted to Welsh government a, a funding request for for two aspects. Um, the first is I, I alluded to this slightly earlier. We, we, we're probably going to see four hundred and fifty to five hundred patients this year. We far outgrown the service. Um, we're probably going to try and get additional pharmacists into the service. Um, there's a huge training burden, so um, I'm already in the process of developing internal training programs that will support that. And the second thing is, that, 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 again, that, that this natural progression, I feel, in our role, which is we're looking to take on the diagnostic role uh, in DVTs. So we've already piloted this uh, on a number of occasions. I, I've done training with the, uh, the GPs and um, we're just waiting on some funding to be able to cement our position there. Um, but I'm pretty optimistic that we'll then be taking on the assessment and diagnostic role with DVT patients, which is quite exciting. Well, that, that's hugely exciting. Um, and, and finally, what is your message to your colleagues? I, I think it's that, um, as far as I'm aware, that there's not many pharmacy teams involved in the management of VT. But I, I would urge colleagues to consider this a role to get into because it's primarily drug based. It's complex. And, and so it definitely requires a, somebody with a specialist knowledge. And I've often felt the VT maybe is a little bit unloved as an area and an area that maybe um, that, that there's not been that that significant interest in, despite the fact, as I mentioned, that, that it's one of the most common conditions that we see. Um, so if you're working in health boards where there's that gap you can see, then I urge you to get involved with the area, develop your expertise, get your IP, develop your services. Uh, and the benefits are absolutely huge to both patients, the organisation, and us as a profession. But again, I, I, if any pharmacists or pharmacy technicians are interested in developing VT services, I urge them to get in contact with me because, as I mentioned, it's something that I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate about at this moment in time. Mr Power, thank you for giving us a terrifically interesting insight into what can be achieved with a pharmacy-led VTE service. Much food for thought there. For more information about the pharmacy-led VTE service and the work done by Mr Power and his colleagues, please visit our website using the link in the description and be sure to subscribe for more news, videos and journals. For updates straight to your inbox, please sign up using the link below. And thanks for watching.